let's give some Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2 reviews. So I went, to, if you haven't seen it already, um, I'm going to try to stay away from any spoilers. There's no huge spoilers in this movie, but I'll, I'll stay away from anything that hasn't really already been put out there. Uh, now, Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2 just came out this last week in May 5th. It is May 9th, so we are right in the wheelhouse of the first week of release. Now, I didn't see any box office numbers for it, but Brendan, look those up real quick while I go through the review. Uh, but Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2 really picks up pretty much right where Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 1 left off. If, if you if you like the Guardians of the Galaxy 1, I'm going to go ahead and say, spoiler alert for the review, um, it's a good movie. You should go watch it. Uh, so that's about the all, all spoilers we'll go through. Uh, but it takes place several months after the first one takes place. So you have the characters pretty much still dealing with the events of the first one. Sort of, kind of. I mean, they're still interacting with some of the people from the first one and going on their new adventures. So let's start breaking this down. And let's start with, uh, well, let's start with writing. And I'm going to go slash directing on this one because this one is written and directed uh, by Mr. Oh, I'm going to say the wrong, wrong name, but James Gunn, he wrote and directed the first one, he wrote and directed the second one, and he's going to write and direct the third one, too. So that's that is a very good sign. And it's top notch. Uh, if you like I said, if you like Guardians of the Galaxy one, you're going to you're going to like this movie, too. So it, it, it just it keeps everything flowing so natural. It's almost like a continuation of the same movie. It almost feels like and, and I could watch these movies back to back and probably not get too bored because it's 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 a nice long flowing smooth story that goes throughout even though they deal with different things it, it really it could be the same it, it's almost like it's an episodic tv show and a really really good episodic tv show like like an hbo one or something like that or from netflix and it just kind of flows and so the writing and directory it, it felt very very smooth very fluent and they kept up the same style and everything from the first one and so it, it gets top top-notch scores then if we're going to keep going we'll go with the acting and of course they bring back the original cast uh everybody's right back in the swing of things they they played these roles so amazing so i'm glad they brought pretty much everybody the same uh you know chris pratt zoe saldana um uh, you know dave bautista vin diesel's in it I mean, he's groot's voice and so he's not really in the second one but he's kind of in it and then bradley cooper plays rocket raccoon's voice and he does it amazing so they all go through and then they add a couple additions i can't remember the actress who plays mantis uh but she's pretty good even though she's a pretty small role uh then we have kurt russell who plays ego the living planet that is not a spoiler they have told us that in the trailers a million times and that is star lord's father and you also get more of the ravagers which you saw a decent amount of them in the first one, but they, they do take their their spot in the story steps up a little bit. And in a good way. I mean, those those characters were very, very good. Uh, I want to say the director's brother plays one of the Ravagers, and he's actually one of my favorite Ravagers, so it's a good addition to the cast. So acting, top, top notch. And then we jump into the plot. Like I was saying, it is a great continuation from the first one. And it really, the plot is interesting. They have enough. There's not really a, that many twists, but there is a couple here and there that do change a little bit about the way you think about the movie. But it's all, it's just very fluid. The pacing is amazing. It's a two hour and 15 minute movie. I swear, when it, the credits started rolling, I was like, it's only been an hour. How are they going to end it already? And that's how, that's one of my trademarks of a good movie is when it feels like it flies by because you're so in, enthralled in what's going on and, and it's just, it's just amazing. So again, it's, it's a two hour, 15 move, minute movie that I thought was an hour long. And I was just like, geez, wow. I kind of want to watch it again to get my full two hours worth, but you know, I did, I did get my two hours. So that's the plot top notch. Amazing. Pretty much overall, if you enjoy the first one, you're going to love this one. And the reason I absolutely adored the first one. And the reason I like this one is because it almost takes it out of it being an action superhero movie and makes it into a comedy with action elements. Uh, very similar to like Rush Hours and stuff like that. Those types of movies, those buddy action comedy movies. This one does it about as good as any movie I've ever seen because the action is very fluid and you believe it. It's in space and all that. Sure. And they have superpowers and stuff. So when I say believe it, I mean, it feels like it could fit if that stuff was real. Um, but it just is hilarious all the way throughout the movie. I mean, there's very little parts to the movie that weren't funny, that there wasn't some sort of good comedy going on. And that even with comedy movies, usually you'll have the beginning is really, really funny. Then they try to get through some of the main stuff. And then the end kind of has some good moments, but this one was just funny throughout. So it, in terms of comedy movies, I'd almost stack it up there with one of my favorite comedy movies right now. 
and not necessarily even put it in the pantheon of the superhero genre of movies. So that's how good it kind of transcends genres. This movie does. And if you like any of those superhero movies, you're going to love this. I mean, if you're looking for more of the darker, deeper, more thought provoking superhero movies, like that, the Batman series, the Christopher Nolan, Batman series. Yeah. You're probably not going to find that here, but you're going to find a great time. You don't even have to turn your brain off. You can just have a great time and enjoy the ride. So overall, I'm giving this movie a 4.5 out of five because it was spectacular from beginning to end. Very few dull moments. The pacing was amazing. It keeps you entrenched in wanting to watch this movie. So uh, yeah, 4.5 out of five. I don't know why I'm not giving it a five. I think I liked it that much, but I feel like it's not my favorite movie ever that I've ever seen. So I can't give it a five. Well, Brian, it seems that a lot of other people do agree with you because I do have the box office numbers. And Mm -hmm. according to the sources I'm seeing, as of uh, yesterday, I believe, uh, Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2 has grossed $156.4 million in the United States and Canada and Mm -hmm. $285 million in other countries for a worldwide total of $441.4 million. And now it's only been out in the U.S. and Canada, I want to say, since the 5th, so not even a full week. Yeah, since it was like a Thursday night premiere, right? Yeah, something like that, yeah. And then it's been out worldwide a week before that, so Mm -hmm. the worldwide number's a little bit bigger, but that is amazing numbers for your first, like, full week of release. So, yeah, and I want to say that that was the... uh, Every Marvel movie that has come out under the Marvel banner was number one in the box office its first weekend. And I want to say that's Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2 made it 15 movies in a row yes, that they 15. debuted at number one. So Fif- that is just spectacular. Yeah. That is, it is mind-blowing. And if you watch Disney movies, like Disney, yeah, they might have like their, the, the kids' movies, but they do a lot of these adult ones. Marvel is owned by Disney now. Uh, they also own the Star Wars. I mean, Marvel, Disney's got a crazy ridiculous slot. Like, they're going to do like the entire movie industry of like 10 years ago this year, just Disney, just that one studio because of beauty and the beast, uh, the gardens of the galaxy, they got Thor, they have Spider-Man coming out. They have pirates of the Caribbean. They have so many movies coming out. So it's going to be a huge year for that studio. I don't know if I like that. I kind of like to see it spread out a little bit more and not have one company get all the power, but um, that's life. Yeah. But, but hit us up. Let us know what you think. Have you seen the movie? Do you like it as much as I did? If so, tell us your favorite part. If not, tell me why I'm stupid. Hit us up. Comment down below, of course, at What's My Face on Twitter, Google Plus on Facebook. Oh, it's good ways of getting a hold of us, but let's keep on a roll.